Greetings. We have service today. We're able to get on. Thank you for praying for us. This is Preacher Rick, and I'm so glad for each one of you that have joined us today. We're going to be looking at the old prophet Micah. Of course, we preached out of the book of Micah. We're going to look a little closer at his life today, uh, being the prophet that he was. Uh, Micah, one of the minor prophets, uh, they call it. Micah came from the country town of Morsheth in southern Judea, about 25 miles southwest of uh, Jerusalem. He was a contemporary of Isaiah. In other words, they lived at the same time uh, and a prophet for the poor. He condemned the oppressors in the establishment, citing the cities as dens of iniquity, that means many sins, with their he held was manifested in the heart rather than in showy religious practices. And amen to that. He predicted the destruction of Jerusalem in Jeremiah 26, 18, but that the city would one day rise again to be the religious center of the world. He was also one of those who predicted the coming of a Messiah, and he did it better than any other uh, prophecy you'll read about the birth of Christ in Bethlehem, and I'll read it to you right now. Uh, it's, uh, uh, But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, Yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel. Micah 5 2. And thank God for that. And uh, as we look a little more history just before we preach, I'd like to share a couple other places. Micah, uh, he was called from God to, from his rustic home to be a prophet. He leaves all his familiar surroundings. Uh, to deliver a stern message of judgment. And sometimes us preachers have to be stern. I had to be stern a little bit yesterday. I feel like I have to be a little bit stern today. Uh, sternness does not mean meanness or hatefulness. It just means you're just uh, telling it like it is, and people that haven't listened need to listen. Uh, he had a stern message of judgment to the princes and people of Jerusalem, burdened by the abusive treatment of the poor by the rich and influential. The prophet turns his verbal rebukes upon any who would use their social or political power. We see a lot of that today, don't we? For personal gain. One third of Micah's book that he wrote exposes the sins of his countrymen. Another third pictures the punishment of God that he's about to sin. And the final third holds out for the hope of restoration. And God's still that way today. And I believe that we uh, today need to preach that we're living in perilous times and we're living in troubled time and there's a lot more coming down the pipes and you'd better take heed anyway uh, so that's that's wonderful but I want to read another verse and and this verse really blesses my heart uh, I really uh, love this verse it's in chapter 3 and verse 8 he said but truly I am full of power uh, now, as he's about to say that, before he says that, he says, he talks about them. He talks to them in verse 2, he says, people, you hate the good and love the evil. Hate the good and love the evil. Now imagine that. And that's what we're seeing. I don't want, really, you don't have to imagine it today because that's what we're seeing in the world. People hate good and love evil. And that's exactly what was going on in Micah's time. And Micah preached against it. And listen to what he said. Well, I won't take time to read all the verses against the false prophets or those that were prophesying falsities. But he said in verse 8, he said, But I, but truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare I've got the right, I can make the judgment call to declare that I'm telling you the truth, in other words. And, I, and the might of the Spirit of God to declare unto Jacob, that would be uh, the children of Israel, and it would be the, for me as a preacher to declare unto the Christians his transgression and to Israel her his sin. And we're seeing so much sin in the so-called church or in the church today we're seeing so much uh, uh, people we're seeing so many people today that are, are so careless with their Christianity uh, it's like uh, that it's just a form of godliness but the Bible says for those, uh, 
to get away from that, uh, to steer clear of that, have a form of godliness and deny the power thereof from such, turn away. The Bible teaches me to turn away from that kind of foolishness. When people have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. And there's so many Christians today that are denying the power of God. Uh, but God is still God. And God still anoints His preachers. Uh, thank God to preach the gospel. Uh, thank God according uh, to His Word. Uh, and by His Spirit. The Bible says preaching the power uh, and demonstration of the Spirit. Uh, uh, thank God. That's the Word of God. Uh, and that though it's through the foolishness of preaching that God has chosen to save the world. Uh, thank God. And God has called me to preach. Uh, and I know beyond a shadow a doubt. Uh, I thank God forever that His Spirit is upon me right now uh, to preach repentance of sin uh, and be born again. Uh, uh, some people say, well, uh, I'm a Christian, but I'm not born again. Well, then you're not a Christian. Uh, I'm just going to be bold today. Uh, I'm just going to tell you how it is uh, that except you repent uh, and are born again, that's exactly what Michael would say to you. Uh, you uh, are not a Christian. Uh, uh, he uh, was full of the power of God in that same spirit. Uh, thank God is here today. Uh, the exact same spirit uh, that came upon Micah is upon me today. Uh, I have no doubt of it whatsoever. Uh, and that same spirit, uh, thank God, is the one uh, that will c condemn you of your sin. Uh, uh, in other words, uh, uh, you'll feel old time condemnation uh, and you'll know uh, that you you need to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Get on your knees. The Bible says every knee shall bow. I want mine to bow before I die. Thank God every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I confess it today while I'm still alive. I don't want to do it when it's too late and when I'm hell bound. But because I confess it today, because I repent of my sins and I'm born of the Spirit of God, I'm heaven bound by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that my sins have been forgiven. I've been cleansed from all unrighteousness. I've been saved beyond a shadow of a doubt. And I know, I thank God, that Jesus is in my heart. I know that He is the only way I make, I'm going to make it or I'm making it today. And I praise Him for that. Do you have that knowledge? Do you have that peace that passeth understanding, uh, that joy uh, that's unspeakable and full of glory. Uh Listen, uh, we need to practice uh, uh, what uh, Micah was trying to tell uh, uh, the uh, uh, children of Israel. Uh, we need to listen to what thus saith the Lord. Uh, uh, we're living in a time uh, uh, that's wish-washing. Everybody wants uh, uh, to hear something uh, that tickles their ears. Uh, they, they want their ears tickled. They want to hear that it's all right to do the things they're doing. Uh, sin is still sin. Uh, it's still wrong to drink. Uh, it's still wrong to commit adultery. Uh, and fornication uh, is still wrong today. Uh, uh, listen, all the stuff that's going on, all the pornography uh, and the ugly stuff in the world uh, uh, that, that our kids are uh, looking at and adults, not just kids, and Christians have been uh, sucked into. Uh, listen, uh, uh, we need to realize uh, uh, that it's time uh, uh, that we get sanctified, holy. Uh, thank God unto the Lord. Uh, uh, the holiness without which uh, no man shall see God. Uh, uh, we need to be. Uh, uh, we need to die daily. The Apostle Paul said, "I die daily." Uh, what's he talking about, preacher? Uh, he means he dies out to the old man and lives under the new. Uh, uh, he means he gets up uh, and he prays, "God, uh, have mercy on me." Uh, uh, what's the Lord prayer say? Uh, it says, "Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Uh, thy will be done. Thy will be done. God's will be done. Uh, if God." God's will's done in our life. Uh, uh, we won't be sinning, will we? Uh, thy will be done. Uh, uh, forgive us this day. Our, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, uh, as we forgive those uh, uh, that commit them against us. Now, listen. 
We need to do the same thing today and we need to realize uh, that it's time uh, uh, that we live the holy lives uh, under the Lord. Uh, you're not going to get anybody saved. You're not going to get any in yourself uh, if you're out there uh, dabbling in sin. Well, God can't... Uh, the, our body is the temple of God, uh, and God cannot even look upon sin, much less dwell in it. Uh, you say, preacher, do you live above sin? No, I don't. Uh, but I'll tell you what I do live. Uh, I live free from it. Thank God whom the Son sets free uh, is free indeed. Uh, thank God uh, I have to, I, it's, a, it's a repentant way, uh, and I have to go, ask God to help me through uh, my sinful nature every day. That's why Paul said I die daily, uh, uh, but I don't live above of sin, but I'm free. Whom the Son says free is free. Are you free today? Have your sins been forgiven? Are you cleansed from all unrighteousness? Are you saved, a candidate for heaven? Is your name in the book of life? That's what really matters in all of our lives. And that's what Micah preached. He, was, he knew he was full of the Spirit. I know I'm full of the Spirit. For truly I am full of power. Chapter 3, verse 8. By the Spirit of the Lord. That same Spirit that raised Jesus up will take me home someday. This is Preacher Rick. Love you all. Praying for you.